SCAR, the Soft Combat Assault Rifle, was initially developed due to an increasing demand for an improved 5.56 weapon with increased reliability and versatility to meet mission needs. SCAR has been designed to improve operational flexibility and increase individual and team lethality while reducing the number of weapons that operators currently need to accomplish missions. SCAR also improves overall combat effectiveness and efficiency by having a more reliable mission adaptable weapon with increased service life. The SCAR consists of three weapon systems that can be configured to meet mission needs. The first is the SCAR Lite. The 5.56 SCAR Lite standard replaces the M4A1. The SCAR Lite CQC replaces the Mark 18 Close Quarter Combat Carbine, CQCC, and the SCAR Lite Sniper variant replaces the Mark 12 Sniper Rifle. The second weapons system is the SCAR Heavy, a 7.62 Select Fire Assault Rifle. The SCAR Heavy standard replaces the M14. The SCAR Heavy CQC is a new capability, and the SCAR Heavy Sniper variant replaces the Mark 11 Sniper Rifle. The Heavy and the Light versions are both shoulder-fired, air-cooled, magazine-fed, short-stroke, gas-operated modular weapons systems. The third weapons system is the Enhanced Grenade Launcher Module, EGLM. The EGLM is a shoulder-fired, 40mm low-velocity, single-shot, rotating breech, pivoting pump, double-action grenade launcher. It has been designed to replace the M79 and M203 grenade launchers. It incorporates a target ranging and ballistic solution enhanced fire control system. One of the key milestones of the SCAR program has been the ability to reduce the logistics footprint by maintaining a 90% parts commonality between SCAR variants of the same caliber. A 60% parts commonality and 100% ergonomic compatibility exist between the 5.56 and the 7.62 calibers. The maintenance philosophy is designed to allow the weapon to be 100% supported at the unit level during its service life. Upper echelon maintenance is not required under normal conditions. The Scarlight has three barrel configurations, standard, CQC, and sniper variant that the operator can choose from depending on the mission. Scarlight's monolithic rail allows for full use of all SOP mod sighting systems. The SCAR Heavy has the same three barrel configurations as the SCAR Light, standard, CQC, and sniper variant that the operator can choose from depending on the mission. As with the SCAR Light, the SCAR Heavy's monolithic rail allows for full use of all SOP mod sighting systems. The EGLM has three configurations that the operator can choose from to support mission requirements. The first is the standalone EGLM. The other two configurations are mounting the EGLM on either the SCAR Light or the SCAR Heavy. The SCAR design has incorporated numerous ambidextrous features to provide optimum capabilities for the operators such as the selector lever, the magazine release, location of the charging handle, sling attachment points, rear sight windage, and bipod deployment, sniper variant only. The EGLM design has also incorporated features that provide optimal capabilities for right and left-handed operators. The barrel positively locks into the breech by rotating locking lugs. 
The EGLM can be loaded in line with the receiver or pivoted right or left to ease loading of all 40 millimeter munitions. The trigger system is double action, an added safety feature that allows the operator to attempt to fire the weapon a second time in the event of a misfire. The breech does not need to be opened and cocked like the M203 and M79. We will now describe the SCAR cycle of operation. Firing begins with pulling the trigger. This will cause the sear to disengage the hammer notch, allowing the hammer to fall. The hammer will strike the firing pin, which in turn strikes the primer, discharging the powder. As the bullet passes the gas port in the barrel, expanding gases go up through the gas port into the gas regulator. The gases impart energy onto the short stroke gas piston, pushing it to the rear. The gas piston contacts the front of the bolt carrier, moving it to the rear and starting the next cycle. Any excess gas is vented forward through the vent hole located in the gas regulator. Unlocking begins when the bolt carrier is moved to the rear. The bolt cam pin starts to cam in the slot on the left side of the bolt carrier, turning the locking lugs until they are clear to move to the rear, free of the barrel extension. Ejecting occurs when the front of the case clears the front edge of the ejection port and the ejector pushes on the left side of the case. This action and the continued movement of the bolt carrier to the rear causes the casing to strike the brass deflector and clear the weapon system. Cocking occurs when the bolt carrier moves to the rear contacting the hammer and pushing it down until fully compressed. As the bolt moves all the way to the rear, the guide rod spring is compressed, forcing the bolt carrier back to the in-battery position. Cocking starts while ejection is occurring. Feeding begins as the bolt carrier moves forward and the front of the bolt contacts the next round in the magazine. Once the round is pushed far enough forward, the rim of the case will clear the magazine feed lips and move toward the chamber. Chambering starts as the tip of the projectile clears the barrel extension and enters the rear of the chamber. Locking occurs as the continued momentum of the bolt carrier moving forward causes the extractor to move over the case rim and the bolt cam pin cams in the slot in the bolt carrier forcing the locking lugs to rotate in the barrel extension. This concludes the presentation.